Say hi so that we can see who's here. We love hearing from you. And of course, if you have any requests today for our movement, I'll take those too. to your back. I will make my way there eventually, but I'm going to read a couple of poems just to kind of set the mood, the theme. As you settle in on your back today, being and breathing, you might stretch out long or have your feet planted with your knees bent. You might have your eyes open or closed. It's entirely up to you. Just 
What feels right in this moment for you? Oh, hi, Tiffany. <laughs> And see where you notice your connection to your mat, to the ground beneath you, rising up to meet you. See if you notice all the points of your body that are held by the earth in this moment. From your feet, up the backs of your legs. Notice where the hips and glutes rest. And visualize and feel your spine, where it rises and where it meets the earth. Feel your shoulder blades, maybe even give them a little shrug down. And then notice where the back of your head rests. When your arms rest by your sides, or maybe on your torso somewhere. And then see if in this moment, if there's anything you can do to adjust, to make yourself even 5% more comfortable in this moment. A little shrug, an unhinging of the jaw, letting the feet turn out, or if your knees are bent, maybe letting the feet be wide on the mat and your knees tip toward one another. And giving yourself permission to be here, to be held by the earth, and simply to breathe your natural breath. Begin following the rhythm of the breath. Breathing in and breathing out. A bird came down the walk. He did not know I saw. He bit an angleworm in halves and ate the fellow raw. And then he drank a dew from a convenient grass and then hopped sideways to the wall to let a beetle pass. He glanced with rapid eyes that hurried all around. They looked like frightened bees, I thought. He stirred his velvet head like one in danger, cautious. I offered him a crumb and he unrolled his feathers and rolled himself softer home than oars divide the ocean to silver for a seam or butterflies on banks of noon leap flashless as they swim. It's a poem by Emily Dickinson. So classic piece of poetry. And then also something contemporary. And this one's titled Thankful by Kelly Roper. These are the things I'm thankful for. The sweet smell of flowers in springtime. Beautiful clear blue skies above me. The feeling of damp grass beneath my bare feet. The sound of a free running stream. The warmth of the sun on my cheeks. The sight of a field filled with corn. The sound of birds singing in the trees. The taste of fresh picked raspberries. Crisp, clear autumn morning, and the sound of leaves crunching beneath my feet, and the sight of pumpkins growing in a field, and the first chill of winter in the air, 
The sight of snowflakes frolicking on the breeze, watching children skate on a frozen pond, and seeing the first robins of spring. And I hope that future generations will still have these things to be thankful for. I think that's a hope we can all gather behind. Notice your breath and notice anything coming up for you in this moment. Feelings, reactions, what mood you're in. How are you? I know that Whatever is coming up, whether you can name it or whether it's simply a feeling, a sensation, and you're not really sure what label to place on it, know that it's okay. It's a part of your experience in this moment, and all is welcome. See where you notice your breath, the low belly, or the ribs, maybe across the collarbones, or maybe you notice the tickle of your breath in and out through your nose. Allow it now to become a little softer, a little smoother, perhaps just a little bit longer than the natural rhythm. So your interpretation of this guidance, as is with all the guidance offered during this class, A little softer, a little smoother, and then perhaps a little bit longer than the natural rhythm. Inviting some subtle movement, bring the arms down by your side, bend your knees, plant your feet. And on your next exhale, gently glue the low back against your mat. And then when you inhale, let the low back peel up and keep your glutes grounded. So tipping back and forth when you exhale, gluing the low back down. Inhales, letting the ribs expand upward and outward. And you might play with this, maybe your arms down by your sides, or maybe it would feel good to open them out to a T. Or even letting the hands rest on your rib cage. Each exhale gently, bringing the low back down to connect. Inhales, finding that lift. And notice how it feels today. Where do you feel the movement? Taking a couple more. Allowing that natural spine position to return. And when you're ready, hug your knees in towards your chest. You can add movement here, rocking or circling. Maybe cross the ankles and take the knees wide. Notice any shifts if you have your legs towards one another. So when you open the knees away, can you feel the movement on your back in different areas? And how's your breathing? 
Let it be softer and smoother. A little bit longer now. If you've been circling, reverse direction. Eventually come back to center. If the ankles are crossed, then cross and bring your hands to cup your kneecaps and start to stir the knees round and round. Knees open and then back toward one another and around. Breathing in and breathing out. Noticing similarities and differences from one hip to the other. And landing back at center. Considering in this moment the most easeful way for you to transition to hands and knees. Consider it. See yourself doing it and then Invite the movement to make your way on up. Finding that tabletop position, knees under hips, wrists in line with the shoulders. Spread the fingers out and reach the top of your head forward and then melt the stomach down, lift the tail, lift the head and heart. Reversing this now, gently. Inhale, letting the stomach relax down, or lift tail, lift head, heart. Maybe root down through the hands. Reversing, spine reaches upward, shoulder blades slide away from one another. Following your breath back and forth. The movement perhaps begins to feel more familiar in this moment. Letting it grow, adding in your own movement. Maybe it would feel good to let the head be the last thing to rise up and the last thing to curl under. One or two more cats and cows. Let me get centered. From here, walk the wrists a little ahead of the shoulders and start to circle the hips. Any size circles that you like. Maybe inhale as you swing the hips forward and exhale as you swing the hips towards your heels. like before reversing directions anytime you choose breathing softer and smoother a little bit longer now let's meet back at center walk the hands slightly more towards you take the knees wide and bring the toes to touch and sink your hips towards your heels. It doesn't need to touch. Walk the hands forward, bringing your forehead down to the mat or stacking your hands to rest your forehead. Any way to find a little bit of contact with your forehead and the earth here. If you have a block, a blanket, a towel, you can always bring that in too. Here in child's pose. Find your breath once again. Meet it here. Feeling it here. 
softer, smoother, a little bit longer. Consider setting a seed of intention, something to plant into your heart during this practice, any kind of seed, your favorite flower, a tree. And what does it represent for you in this moment? What would support you in your journey? Maybe it's a little unclear, maybe Setting that as the intention, clarity. And maybe if anxiety has been present today, inviting in something that would support or ease that. Grounding, calming, feeling rooted, feeling present. Slowly rise up, keeping the knees wide. Option to let the feet lift up and let the hips slide forward. Exhale back into that child's pose. Inhales, rising up, seal pose. And here, what serves you? Perhaps think of really rooting down through the hands here and squeezing the shoulder blades towards one another. Exhale, sinking back. So notice where you feel the pose. Moving into the pose. Maybe 80% effort today. Taking one more, we'll meet in child. And we'll rise back up to hands and knees. Send the right leg long, tucking the ball of the right foot into the mat in here. Today, see how it feels to work on keeping the hips very square toward the mat. Optional, begin to lift that right foot up as if you are pressing that foot into a wall behind you. Lifting the heel no higher than the hip, because notice, if you start lifting it higher, what happens? Try it. That right hip starts lifting up and stacking on top of the left. So where's the point where it's level with that left hip still? Top of the head reaches forward, optional. Rise up onto the left fingertips. Still here, maintain. Both hips parallel to your mat. Maybe lift your left hand up. You could lift it up, bringing the arm up to in line with the ear, palm and thumb up. And then optional little movement, elbow toward the knee. Inhales, reaching long, holding steady or adding that little movement. Slow and steady. Reaching long one more time, then landing the right foot, landing the left hand. Lift the left foot up this time and let it swing a little bit wider on the mat toward the bottom left corner and then slowly transfer your weight onto that left side, lifting the right hand, planting the right foot and reach the right arm up to the sky. Breathing here. Optional, lifting that right foot up again. Reach through the heel just like before, like you were pressing the foot against the wall. Let the top of your head reach forward. Optional here, crunches. Knee toward elbow. You can reach them forward and in front of you. Or along the side, the rib cage. You could try a combination of both. Where do you notice the movement? 
me feel. Make one or two more and then hold long. Land the foot. Reach through that pinky toe edge and reach your right arm long up and over, arching the right side of your body up. And here slowly, land the right hand and walk both hands now to in front of you, keeping the right leg out to the side, left hip over left knee, and then rise on up. Good. Keep reaching through the right pinky toe edge. Left arm can reach up and over. The right arm can slide down the right leg. Your gaze could be up or down or stay centered. Inhale, back to center, reach the arms, then reach them up towards one another, palms connect, and bring the hands down to the heart center. Breathing in, breathing out. Let's bring both hands down to the mat once more, and then this time, pivoting on that knee, letting the right toes lift up, one hand on either side. You could be up on the fingertips here, breathing in. Breathing out. And from here, bend that right knee, bringing the knee over the ankle for a low lunge. You can exhale back into that hurdler. Inhale forward. Find that lunge now. On your next inhale, swing the arms all the way up, reaching them toward the sky. Hips are square to the front of the mat. Inhale. And as you exhale, left arm forward, right arm back. Little twist, heart toward that right leg. Hug the knee towards your midline. Inhale to center. And exhale, left arm back, right arm forward. Inhale to center. Exhale, let both hands come down to your mat on either side of that right leg. Step that right leg back next to the left and take some hip circles. How are you feeling? All right, finding center on the mat. We're going to do the whole series again, this time for the left side. So, plugging the left toes into the back of the mat, reaching through that heel. Option A, pausing right here. Hips are square toward the mat. Lifting up the right fingertips like there's a little cupcake under your hand. Maybe lifting the whole hand, maybe reaching it forward. Option, start lifting that left foot up, planting it on an invisible wall. Holding this balancing pose or adding a little movement. Exhales, knee toward elbow. Inhales, reaching. Breathing softer, smoother, a little bit longer. Take one more crunch if you're choosing the crunches, reaching. Landing the hand and the foot. The right foot will lift up now. Move it toward the right bottom corner. Then slowly pivot, stacking the left hip on top of the right, letting the left foot land and reach the left arm on up. Kneeling side plank here. So you're going to stay right here, breathe, or lift that left foot up again. Balancing, adding crunches if you want, the oblique the upward motion or the frontward combination thereof, your choice. Breathing in and breathing out. 
One or two more. You pick. Reach along once again. Hold, hold, hold. And then lay on the foot. Reach through the pinky toe edge and send that left arm long overhead. The whole left side of the body getting a stretch. And then slowly turn the torso toward the mat, letting the left hand come down and walk the hands toward the side of your mat, letting the right knee and hip be in aligned and lift on up. Hands can come to your hips here. Keep reaching through that left pinky toe. Slide the left hand down the left leg. Right hand can reach up and over a little side bend toward the left. Rising up now. We're going to make our way into that hurdler pose. Kind of sneaky. Land both hands on the mat in front of you. This time turning left. Let the left toes lift up. One hand on either side. Make any adjustments you need. The right hip is about stacked over that right knee. You can be up on your fingertips. It's a good place for blocks too. Breathing here. And then when you're ready, inhaling into your low lunge. Exhaling back into that hurdler stretch. Your pace. If it feels good to pause in one or the other, give yourself permission to be there. Maybe notice differences between the left side and the right side. Are there similarities too? forward into that lunge and rise on up with an inhale. Exhale, right arm forward this time, left arm back, and if you went the other way, it's okay. Inhale, back to center, and exhale, go the opposite way that you just went. Inhale, and back to center. Exhale, to land the hands and step that left leg back. Hands and knees, take some hip circles. choice, a puppy pose or back to child pose. Puppy pose, you can keep your hips over the knees and send the hands forward, reaching your heart toward the floor, letting the forehead or chin rest. Or child pose, knees wide, toes towards one another and sinking the hips back. So it's just about what would feel good in this moment for you. You can try both. Maybe there's another pose calling your name in this moment. Be reminded of that seed that you planted in your heart. And what would it take to cultivate, to grow, to nourish your seed of intention? Loving words, kindness. Maybe there's action. You don't have to know the specifics. In this moment, being and breathing, it's enough. Slowly rise on up, and then melt right on down to your stomach, the front side of the body. Bring the elbows in under the shoulders here, tops of the feet. Press into the mat. You can spread your fingers out here. And just for now, hug the muscles against the bones of the legs. Root down through your elbows. See if you can lift your heart up just a little bit more. And then see what muscles it would take without actually lifting. See what muscles want to engage as if you were going to lift your elbows up off the mat. 
feel that. Soften. And find that engagement once again, hugging the muscles against the bones. Relax. And now this time, if you want, maybe lift the elbows a tiny little bit up. Exhales to bring them back down. Inhales. A tiny little bit, maybe a little more this time. Then back down. Breathing, inhaling to lift, exhaling, lower down. One more time. And this time landing, letting the elbows swing out, stack the hands, rest the forehead, bend the knees, and sway the feet side to side. Slowly lower the feet. I'm pausing here for a breath or two. Where do you feel your breath now? How is it different than when we began class on our back? Can you feel the breath against the earth? In this moment, can you allow it to expand on the inhale, pressing into your mat, and subtly release on the exhale? Give it a try. See how it feels. Slowly we'll rise up, bring the elbows back and under the shoulders, spreading the fingers wide. And options, coming back into those forearm push-ups or finding a version of a forearm plank. We're going to keep the tops of our feet planted here, so we're not tucking our toes, tops of the feet planted. And then round the spine up, lifting the hips up off the mat. Now the knees are staying connected for the moment. And then slowly lower the hips down and lift through the heart. So feel the spinal movement here. Imagine it rounding up, reach the top of the head forward, and then slowly lowering back down to the earth. Exhale, lifting. Inhale, back down. If that breathing pattern doesn't feel right, reverse it. See which one does. There's not a right or wrong. Now optional, the next time you go to lift up, lift not only the hips up, but the knees as well. Tops of the feet are pressing into the mat, top of the head reaches forward, and then slowly lower knees, lower hips, lift up through the heart. So again, rounding up, whatever version, kneeling or knees lifting, breathing. And then lowering back down. Let's do one more. Keep the top of your head reaching forward. Slowly lowering down. Elbows wide. Step the hands, rest the forehead. Optional feet lift and swing the feet side to side. Releasing the feet down, bring the elbows in under the shoulders, and keeping in mind at any point during this, you can always lower the knees back down. Take what option is serving you in the moment, maybe moving back and forth in between the two. So, as you're ready, finding that 
top of the foot, forearm plank, roll the spine up and either with the knees down or the knees lifted. And here, just like earlier, how we were working on keeping the hips even toward the mat instead of swaying side to side, tuck one set of toes and then the other, forearm plank. Reach to the heels and then slide forward on the, on the tippy toes. So we're either kneeling, rocking forward and back or toes pressing in, knees lifted. And then flip the feet back over and slowly melt on down. Let's do that again. Lifting, rounding up, tucking the toes, rocking forward, rocking back. Keep breathing. Flip the toes, lower down. One more. Rising up, you've got this. Tuck the toes, rock forward and back, forward, back. One more. Flip, roll down, lift the heart, ah. And fold down, down, you know what? Take the arms down by the hips, turn a cheek, rest a cheek. If you have glasses on, you might want to take them off. A little crocodile pose. Let the elbows bend so your shoulders can really sink forward in this moment. Breathe in. Breathing out. Lifting the head, turning to the opposite side. Breathing in. Breathing out. And softer, smoother breath. A little bit longer. Finding center with your gaze and pressing yourself up to tabletop however you see fit. Right into some cats and cows. Spine relaxing the stomach down. our first series one more time before a cool down. I don't know about you, but this class really flew by for me. So step that right foot toward the back of the mat, keeping in mind doing any and all of the movements. Maybe you try something a little different this time. So reaching through that right heel here, maybe lifting up. You can send the left arm forward. You can add the crunches if you like. Exhaling, knee toward the elbow. Inhale, slow. And lay on the hand. You can keep the foot lifted. Pivoting on the left foot. Letting the right foot land. Reaching the right hand up. Kneeling side plank. Make any adjustments you need. And optional, lift that right foot up again. Maybe you held it up the whole time. You can take crunches here too, the oblique ones overhead or forward ones, combination. And maybe adding a little thoracic rotation, keeping that foot lifted and slowly threading the right arm as if you're going to take it behind you, threading it under the left arm. 
and you're reaching it back up. You can do this with the leg lifted or you could plant it and thread. It might give you a little more movement option with landing. Whereas lifted, a little less, more balance. What do you need right now? We'll slowly meet back at center. Land the foot. Walk both hands to the side of your mat. Good. Now here this time, bend that right knee. Walk both hands toward that bent right knee. And then come back to the front. Just bending into that little hip. And then back. We'll come back, stacking the left hip over the left knee, and slowly rise on up. Turn that right foot parallel to the side of the mat, and as if you were going to glue the pinky toe edge to the mat. Slide the right hand down the leg, reach the left arm up and over. And slowly bring both hands down to the mat once again. We'll move into the hurdler, letting the left toes lift up, letting the right toes lift up, slowly pivoting. You can take one arm on either side of that right leg or both to the inside. You can try sinking all the way back toward your left heel if you want, drawing the toes up and rising up to your lunge. And you could also stay lifted here. Finding lunge on an inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, left forward, right back. Inhale to center. Exhale, reversing this. Left arm back, right forward. Inhale to center. Take cactus arms here, bending the elbows 90 degrees, squeeze the shoulders towards one another, maybe lift the chin up here. Inhale, reaching up, exhale, hands to the mat, step that right foot back, take some hip circles. Good, left side's turn, reach the left foot toward the back of the mat. And the right hand can lift, the left foot can lift, you can add crunches. Breathing softer, smoother, a little bit longer. Landing the hand, option land the foot or keep it lifted. The right foot's going to lift as you pivot. Now land that left foot if you want, or keep it lifted. Reaching the left hand up, reaching through that left heel if you want. Crunches. And you have the option of threading the needle here too, with a lifted foot or a planted foot. Check in, what serves you on this side? Is it similar or different than the right? Inhales and exhales. You can get long here if you want. And we'll make our way with hands at the side of the mat. Rising up. Well, Come back down if you rose up there. Almost forgot to add. Walking the hands toward that left leg and then back. Bending the left knee as you walk toward it. And back. One more time. And now we'll rise on up. Hands can be at the hips or you can slide the left hand down the leg. Reach the right hand up and over. Breathing in, breathing out. Keep reaching through that left pinky toe edge. And 
does it feel like when you're engaged that versus when you relax it? Does it help you to engage any more of the muscles of the leg? Create a little tension. Rising on up. And the hands will come down. We're pivoting toward that left leg this time. Let the heel stay glued. The toes can lift up. The back leg pivots to make any adjustments. Prayer the pose, and remember you can sink all the way toward that back heel. Or you can keep the hips stacked over the knee. Moving into the lunge. And exhales into further. If you'd like to take another stretch with me, bending the knees and planting the feet, taking the right ankle across the left thigh for figure four. And you can use the left leg to lift 
both legs bringing them towards your torso, holding on to the back of the left leg or the right knee. You can add rocking, circling here. You could keep the left foot planted, open the arms to a T and as if you were going to take that right foot across your body, taking a little twist, walking side to side. Slowly coming back to center. Root through the heels, lift your hips up and down just to realign. And then cross the left over the right. And the same options for this side. Doing what serves this side, whether rocking or lifting or combination. Breathing softer and smoother, a little bit longer. And then slowly, feet to the mat, lift and lower the hips. Any last movement, and making yourself comfortable for your final resting. Whatever that might be, maybe bringing in a blanket or a pillow behind the knees or behind the head. And giving yourself permission to find a little stillness, to nourish and cultivate your seed of intention. And I have one more poem to share with you during your final resting today. You might tune in, you might tune out, it's up to you. Be and breathe, rest and receive. First verse by Tim Siebels. I admit the world remains almost beautiful. The dung beetles snap on their iridescent jackets despite the canine holiness of the Vatican. And despite the great predatory surge of industry, two human hands still mate like butterflies when buttoning a shirt. Some mornings I take myself away from the television and go outside where the only news comes as fresh air folding over the houses. And I feel glad for an hour in which race and power and all the momentum of history add up to nothing. As if from all the mad grinding in my brain, a single blue lily has grown, my skull open like a lake. I can hear an insect sawing itself into what must be a kind of speech. I know there's little mercy to be found among us that we have already agreed to go down fighting, but I should be more amazed. Look at the blood and guess who's holding the knives. Shouldn't we be more amazed? Doesn't the view just blister your eyes? To have come this long way, to stand on two legs, to be not tarantulas or chimpanzees, but soldiers of our own dim-witted enslavement to utterly miss the door to the enchanted palace, to see myself coined into a stutter, to allow the money to brand us and the believers to blindfold our lives. In the name of what? If that old book was true, the first verse would say, embrace the world, be friendly, the forests are glad you breathe. I see now the earth itself does have a face. If it could say I, it would plead with the universe 
the way dinosaurs once ground at the stars. It's like the road behind us is stolen completely so the future can never arrive. So look at this. Look what we've done with all we knew. With all we knew that we knew. Gently begin to arrive, to greet yourself. To subtly move, to turn the head side to side. And to rest a moment or two longer just as you are or maybe Curl up on the side of your choice. And take three more breaths wherever you are. Be reminded of that seed that you have planted. Connected and honored in this moment. When you're ready. Let's meet together seated. a moment to acknowledge this time and space you have cultivated for you, your practice. May we know peace, wisdom, and serenity as we fill our hearts. May you be healthy and may you have peace. As always, it's an honor to be here with you. Namaste. Thank you for joining Joel and myself today. We will be here in the morning for some mindful movement, 9 a.m. Eastern. If you want to join us there, if it doesn't work out for your schedule, all of the live videos are saved onto Karma Group Yoga business page. If you enjoyed this class and want to share it with friends or family, we would be absolutely honored to have you do so. Or if you leave a review on our Facebook page, it supports us. The financial contributions can be made in the description attached to this video. There's some links there. Thank you. Be well. Beautiful evenings, everyone. You're welcome, Karen. Have a good night.